Welcome back, everybody, to the deep dive. This time, we're heading out into the wilds. Um, into the wilderness. Yeah, the wilderness of Maine to untangle a story that's as spooky as it is strange. The Allagash abductions happened back in 76. Classic. Right. You've really been digging deep into this one. I have. It's. Um, I can see your research pile is overflowing over there. Yeah, I went down the rabbit hole. Well, good thing. That's what we're here for. Okay. It's got everything, talk of alien encounters, chunks of time just gone, and memories that surface later. So get ready, folks, because this one's a wild ride. Yeah, you know what really draws me to the Allagash abductions is how they really get at those deep-seated fears, you know? the kind of, We all have fear of what we don't know, feeling like someone's watching us, and then that creepy idea that time, well, maybe time isn't as solid as we like to think it is. It makes you want to check your watch twice, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so before we go too far down this path, let's set the scene. Picture this. Four friends, Jack and Jim Wiener. They're twins, by the way, along with Chuck. Rest and Charlie Falls. They decide to do what a lot of folks would love to do, take a canoe trip down the Allagash Wilderness Waterway in Maine. But here's the thing. It's 1976. No cell phones, no GPS, no easy way to call for help if things go bad. Can you imagine? You're out there, wilderness all around, just the sounds of nature, the wind, the water against your canoe. It'd be peaceful, sure, but you'd also feel pretty vulnerable, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely. And speaking of vulnerable, one night, that's exactly how these guys feel when they spotted a bright light seemingly out of nowhere. And not just a quick flash, this thing seems to be following them. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw a mysterious light tailing me in the middle of nowhere, I'd be paddling faster than I ever have. You know, the light itself is one thing, but it's the feeling so many people describe in these encounters, that feeling of being watched, like something's not right, really gets under your skin. Like some primal fear, you know, being hunted. Totally helpless against something you don't understand. Definitely sends chills down your spine just thinking about it. Talk about nightmare fuel. I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere, something creepy is going on, and to top it off, you can't even trust your own memories. Right. And think about the context here. It's the 70s, right? The idea of alien abduction, sure, it's out there in pop culture, mm -hmm. but actually experiencing it, talking about it, that's a whole other level of taboo. Yeah, you'd be labeled a conspiracy theorist before you could even blink. Yeah. So what did these guys do? I mean, how do you even begin to deal with something like that? Well, for years, they really didn't. The memories, the weird feelings, it just kind of festered. It wasn't until much later that they decided to try something a little more, shall we say, unconventional hypnosis. Hypnosis. It always makes me think of those old movies with the swinging pocket watches. But seriously, it's a fascinating tool, though I guess a bit controversial, especially when it comes to digging up lost memories. Definitely. There's a whole debate, right? Yeah. Does hypnosis uncover true memories, or does it just plant false ones? It's a question that's still being debated. But let's put that aside for a moment, because what these men claim to remember under hypnosis, chilling, to say the least. Oh, boy. Here come the goosebumps. Tell me more. Each of them, hypnotized separately, described being taken aboard a spacecraft. They talked about being medically examined, feelings of utter terror, helplessness, like something out of a sci-fi horror movie. Gives me serious fire-in-the-sky vibes. It's a common theme, though, isn't it? Those abduction stories really tap into some primal fears. The unknown, the feeling of being totally powerless against something beyond our understanding. Okay, but here's the thing that I find really intriguing, even though they're hypnotized separately. Their stories. They had these incredibly consistent details. It wasn't like one person's hazy memory was influencing the others. You know, that's something people who believe in this stuff often point to the consistency across multiple witnesses. Of course, the skeptics, they'll say these common elements, they're just a product of, well, our shared cultural understanding of what alien encounters are supposed to be like. Movies, books, even those subconscious desires, they can all color how we perceive things. It's like trying to unravel a dream, right? Was it real or was it just your mind playing tricks on you? But here you've got four minds all telling a similar story. Exactly. And that's what makes the Allagash abduction so fascinating. You know, it mm -hmm. forces us to grapple with the very nature of memory, of perception, maybe even reality itself. What if we don't know as much as we think we do? It really makes you think, doesn't it? about what an experience like that does to your sense of reality. I mean, these weren't thrill seekers. They weren't attention grabbers. They were just four regular guys on a canoe trip, and then they came back. Different. The aftermath. That's what I find fascinating, too. They talked about the anxiety, the nightmares, the sheer difficulty of just trying to fit back into their old lives, like their sense of normal, it had been shattered, and now they were left picking up the pieces. 
I can't imagine trying to explain that to someone. Hey, honey, you remember that camping trip? Yeah, well, things got a little weird. Some aliens showed up. It probably wouldn't go over so well. Right, and remember, back then, the stigma around UFOs, alien abduction, it was even heavier than it is now. So <laughs> these guys, they were really sticking their necks out by talking about it. Makes you wonder how many other stories are out there, just like theirs, but buried under fear in silence. That's a chilling thought. But did anyone believe them? Were there any actual investigations into what they said happened? Oh, the Allagash abductions. They definitely got their share of attention. Researchers, skeptics, the public, everyone had something to say about it. There were psychological evaluations, background checks, you name it. But at the end of the day, there were no real answers. No smoking gun, no spaceship parts, just their word against, well, the unknown. So a classic case of you had to be there. It sounds like the people who believe they already did and everyone else just found more reasons to be skeptical. It's the paradox, isn't it? When personal experience clashes with our need for hard evidence, we're left with more questions than answers, forced to confront the limits of what we know. Which I guess is part of what makes this whole thing so captivating. The Allagash abductions, they may not be proof of alien life, but they remind us that there are still mysteries out there, experiences beyond our understanding that challenge everything we think we know about reality. It's a little scary, sure, but also kind of amazing, don't you think? It reminds us we don't have all the answers and that the universe is a much stranger, more wonderful place than we can imagine. Leaves us with a lot to think about, that's for sure. So what do you think really happened out there in the Allagash wilderness? Was it a genuine close encounter or something else entirely. We may never know for sure, but that's the beauty of the deep dive, isn't it? We keep searching for answers, keep exploring the unknown. Until next time, keep looking up and keep asking questions.